Welcome to Caldwell County Today. My name is John Hawkins and I'm the director of the Caldwell Heritage Museum. And with me again today is Bruce Craig. Bruce is certainly no stranger to these programs because we've been here five times, Bruce, is that right? This is our fifth program. And we're going to be talking about Caldwell County artifacts, Caldwell County memorabilia again today as we have previously. So Bruce, I'm just going to go ahead and let you start wherever you want to start. Well, you know, we've had some good information that has come to you and has come to me. One of the little bits of information, if you will hold this one up right here, we introduced these things as uh, tokens that were given out during the war as a rationing. All right, we found out that if you had a coupon that you were going to buy maybe a dollar's worth of gas, which in those days was pretty cheap, all right, you only wanted 80 cents. They didn't give you change back. They gave you these little tokens. And this token, a red and a blue, it's the only two I've ever seen, one could be a nickel, one could be a dime, or you know, one could be a quarter. We, right. we don't know that denomination, but we do know that it was given back in change, and that came from a guy that came by to see you and uh, uh, actually right, gave you one of right, those things. Right, uh -huh. a gentleman named Ed Green brought that in. So, you know, that's, you know, it, it just adds to the story and, and makes it a little more complete. So, folks, like I say, you know, we appreciate those phone calls. We appreciate the people visiting the museum up here to tell different things. So, you know, just keep the phone calls coming. Right. And while you're getting ready, Bruce, let me add to that that a lot of these people uh, call me and tell me things. And sometimes my memory slips a little bit. So if we're not mentioning it, it doesn't mean that we don't appreciate it. It just means it slipped my mind at the moment. Well, I make a lot of notes at the house and sometimes I write something down I don't know who called me, and you know, and I'm trying to make better notes now. Okay. Uh, we're going to show a couple of pictures. We're All not right. trying to get in on Joe Hartley's thing, but you know, this one I was real intrigued with this picture. Uh, Joe did not know where this was. All right, I think I'm 99.9% .9 right, uh, which that's that's pretty sure. All right, this would be on West Avenue. Uh, it was a filling station, one of the early filling stations. Uh, on the, this side of the picture, you will see just a, a little bit of a building which was a wooden structure known as Lenore Shoe Shop. Okay. And on the other side, you see a little bit of a brick building uh, that jotted out from a big brick building. The little brick building was known as uh, Braswell Shoe Store for many years. And then the big brick building was the Chevrolet place. Uh, it started out as Fry Chevrolet, and it became Fred Gaddy's Chevrolet. It just came back to me, John. It took me a while, but I got it. Okay. What street were they on, Bruce? They were on West Avenue. Okay. And in behind it, you see a little bit of a, a couple of letters, but it's the Johnson and Company, who was Mac Johnson, M.C. Johnson, and he owned the place back in the back back there that sold uh, feed and seed and livestock. Okay. And he eventually started the Oldsmobile place oh, I see. back there. Um, okay. Right off of, if you'd come off of Willow Street up, up into there. And so, about what year is that picture? Now you got me. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got it figured out where it's at. But the date, I'm, I'm not real sure. Perhaps I'm somebody gonna, can tell us. I'm going to guess somewhere in the 30s. All right. You know, and I could be wrong or right. We, we can't ever Perhaps tell. Perhaps somebody out there knows the exact month, day, and year even. Uh, now this next, next picture, uh, this came from uh, Conley Eisenhower's son. And uh, he called me about this picture and uh, I went by and picked up the original and made some copies for him and for me. Uh, and you want to read the caption that we have on this? All right. It says on the left is Dewey Roosevelt, who was born about 1905. That's Dewey Roosevelt Eisenhower, born about 1905, and his brother Conley Bruce Eisenhower, born about 1907. And the location is West Avenue between the Caldwell Creamery and Depot Street in an area known as Little Chicago in Lenore. 
and the date of the photo is known, but it's probably, but, but the operation uh, of the business was between 1929 and 1931. Mm -hmm. So uh, I didn't know we had a little Chicago in Lenore. Well, I think the reason for that was it was a pretty rough area. Uh, let's see, it would be to the left side of this picture. There was a business there called, uh, known as the Caldwell Wine Shop. Okay. So, you know, they sold alcoholic beverages down there. And I understand back in the early days there were a few people stabbed and a couple people shot okay. down there. That's the reason it became that little Chicago down there. So, Okay. Perhaps we might capitalize. You know, there's a popular movie right now called Chicago. Maybe we could have one about Lenore and call it Little Chicago. <laughs> yeah. Now, John, this next picture that we're looking at is uh, a classroom of a bunch of ladies. Uh, and this was actually on March the 30th, uh, March of 1930 is okay. when it was. And uh, this is inside the Lenore High School that building down there. And they were in a first aid class. And they had somebody laying in the bed that they were to, you know, administer or whatever or learn from or whatever. And we know most of these ladies' names. So your mother or you might still be living that might be in here. Okay, standing left to right, it's Lucille Spencer, Miss Weaver, Thelma Ray, Louise Clark, Mamie Holman, Ruby Tomlinson, Margaret Greer, Mildred Melton, uh, Nancy, is it Pennell, Poinel, Pennell, uh, Louise Honer, uh, Caldwell, I'm sorry, Colleen Richards. Uh, the patient is Eloise Hip, and seated is Mae Michael, Annie German, Myrtle Story, Esther Madison, and Faye Annis. Yes, I know. I know May Michael, who is now May Beaver, and I probably know some of these other ladies too if I knew their married names. Yeah. Well, Mamie Holman was the one when I found this picture that, uh, you know, it really stood out to me, and I, I knew I recognized her, and it was my aunt who became uh, Mamie Tigg, who married Bill Tigg, that ran the radio at the All sheriff's right. department for so many years. And well, we certainly hope that there are people out there who recognize a relative in that picture. Well, Bruce, it looks like you have some dinnerware right here. I hope you've prepared dinner for us this evening. <laughs> Well, actually, I had to wash one of these out before I could bring it because we keep it on our counter and we keep bananas in it or apples in it or something, okay. you know, so I had to wash it before I brought it. But it's amazing at what some of these people put out for advertisements so people could take it home. And one that put out the most was Tig Furniture Company, was in Lenore. Uh, it would be... What is that street? That's still, it's West Avenue. Okay. And uh, it would be on as you're coming up. Uh, beside of it would have been the bakery, and then in the corner was the State Theater. Okay. It's in that little corner. Almost where, on the square. Yeah, where that monument is. Uh, is that to uh, the, the... The Vietnam Memorial, I believe, yes, is there. Yes, I believe there's a lawyer's office in there now, isn't there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that was uh, Tig Furniture Company for many, many years. I, I bought my first bedroom suit there okay. when, when my wife and I got married. Now, they done a lot of different things and styles. A lot that they done was in mixing bowls. And uh, they we have a couple of different versions of it. All right. This one right here, and see what makes it so good is it's written inside. John, if you'll hold that one up. Now, if you see the difference is one is just Teague Furniture Company of Lenore, North Carolina, and the other one is Incorporated. So they must have been a getting into the fact that they need to become incorporated to keep somebody from suing them and taking their house. Okay. That's the way I understand some of that, you know. Right. Uh, this one right here is a real popular bowl. Uh, it's called Watt Pottery. And sometimes in some of this stuff it can get real expensive, especially ones that are advertising. See right here, this one says, Save Money at Tig Furniture Company on the Square, Lenore, North Carolina. And the way I understand the way their writing went, this is one of their earliest pieces. 
and this Watt pottery right here was put out before, and that's also Watt pottery, okay. but it was put out. This was the first ones put out. And I see there's some platters also from TIG. Uh, oh, they made a bunch of the platters, and I understand that I think I'm missing one of them. Uh, and they call it a turkey platter because they put the picture of a turkey, turkey on there. Right, Thanksgiving. Yeah, for Thanksgiving. But, you know, you could buy a little dinette set or something, and they would give you one of these to take home. Uh, that was going to be one of my questions, is how did you get one of those platters? Well, you bought something. That, okay. You know, it, they always say it's free. Right. I don't know that anything is free. No free lunch. Huh? No free lunch. Now, this one is pretty unusual, and it's an early one. Uh, because what this is advertising is the, the North Carolina tree, is it? It's the longleaf long pine. pine. yes. And it does say on the back, compliments of Tig Furniture Company, Lenore, okay, North Carolina. So you had to turn that one over to see it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, now the next one is still a turkey platter, but it's, it's a different pattern. Uh, it's kind of got like a Greek key pattern around it. And uh, it also says compliments of Teague Furniture Company of Lenore, North Carolina. And then we have one that has a solid color around the outside edge of it in kind of a greenish blue. And uh, it also says compliments of Teague Furniture Company. So they made these things each time that they would come out with them after they'd give out so many, they would change it a little bit. And there is one of these that I'm missing. I have seen it, but I hadn't been able to uh, get my hands on it yet. You know? And of course, Tig was not the only one who did it, and, and Tig did other things also besides platters. Right. Uh, they also done yardsticks. And uh, this gives their phone number of Plaza 46211. So with the, the Plaza, we know that this came out in the 50s or late 50s right early 60s uh -huh. yeah so these places put out a lot of different things and they just done it you know so people would remember where they bought their things from right. but uh, and like you say they were not the only ones that done the platters that's one similar to one that Tig had done too the longleaf pine again yeah but these people put their name on the front right and actually it was right behind it was on mulberry street mm -hmm. Uh, about two doors down from the e. e. Shaw Furniture Company. Right. W.B. Lindsay. W.B. Lindsay. I believe they were located about where H&R Block is now, aren't they? Close to it anyway. No, this was in the place that has the big building that has the church in it now. Oh, okay. That the was Trinity w Church. Right. That was W.B. Lindsay. And I think also we have, uh, this is kind of a plastic celluloid-like stuff, but it's a, and, and you don't like to think about it, but it has a beer opener on it, and it also has a bottle opener, so you okay. could open a soft drink or a beer. Right. But uh, that is from W.B. Lindsay Furniture Company. So right. you see here, they put out platters or yardsticks, mixing bowls, platters, or keychains, or you know, just whatever, but these places put out a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. One more platter, I believe. Another turkey. No, that's not turkeys, is it? No, this is pheasants. Pheasants, right. And that's the only thing I can figure out was Tig had the market cornered on turkey platters, so D.D. Sudworth put out a pheasant platter. Right. Uh, this is the only one I have. I understand there's at least one more, and, uh, but this was uh, compliments of D.D. Sudworth Furniture Company in Lenore, North Carolina. Now, this was when he was on Harper Avenue at the foot of what was known as Town Hill. Right. Uh, and the building across the street from where he was is still standing. He had it at, to work on appliances, but his main store was on the right as you went down that hill and got to the and foot. And we might of mention that D.D. Sudworth is still in business, but I believe they live out in the Whitnall area now. Yeah, they actually, uh, they actually moved to West Avenue in where the antique store is now. Okay. And here's a yardstick that is on two, 812 West Avenue. All right. Uh, northwest in Lenore, North Carolina. Now this is when they were on Harper Avenue. Uh, they had a number of 754-6121. So 
uh, so here. they've been in at least three different locations that we know of, and yeah, perhaps mm -hmm. Bob might call us and tell us if three is all. I think that's the only one. Okay, and uh, I understand Bob has both of those platters, and maybe a few other things that we. Bob, yeah. that sounds like a hint to me. <laughs> well, he's got. Dee Dee Sutter had several daughters that would like to get their hands on that platter. Okay. You know, it, it, what amazes me about a lot of these people is that their family was in the business and they would give these things away, but they never saved any for themselves. Right, okay. And so then it becomes a fact that they learn about it, know it's there, and then they, and want, they it. want it. they want it, right. Then okay. it becomes, it's hard to find these things. I mean to tell you, uh, I beat the bushes every day and uh, sometimes I win and sometimes I lose, you know. Okay, so, it looks like uh, some businesses also had some smaller items. Yes. Uh, a lot of these businesses would put out what is known as a coin purse where you would carry your change in. And uh, the one that John is holding is Earps Radio and TV Service, which was on, uh, Virginia, on Virginia Street. Street right. It was where uh, Mr. Lackey started out with his dog uh, veterinarian. Veterinarian, okay. Yeah. Matter of fact, uh, where he used to bathe them in the back I tore that out with a sledgehammer one time. It was okay. a bunch of concrete. Uh, this one right here is the 75th anniversary of Mutual Savings and Loan. And this change purse here is on Citizens Savings and Loan. Now, the key factor to me is that these businesses are no more. Right. They are gone. And if, you know, if these things are not saved, then they can be forgotten. So right. anything and everything that we can save on these businesses, put together into a collection, then it just gives a lot of people that their grandkids can come up here and see this and, you know, and enjoy it. Okay, what else do you have there that's... Well, I've got one other uh, bottle opener, and uh, this one right here was on the Mutual Savings mutual and Loan. Mutual Savings, right. Now, let's see if we can figure out where this was at the time. Okay, this is when they opened their little uh, secondary place there in Whitnell okay. at the Fairway Shopping Center. Uh, it still says, well, it says Norwood Street, Lenore, North Carolina, and gives right. their phone number, but it says at Fairway Shopping Center. Okay. And so, you know, they uh, opened a new branch and put it there, but now Mutual put out they put out an apron, they put out a hat, they put out coasters, uh, matchbooks, uh, oh just, you know, they put out a lot of things over right. the years. They started out where Red's Men's Shop was, okay. the side of the antique store. Then they moved out on the corner of uh, South Main Street where there's nothing in that building right now. And then eventually they built the big building down there that is now a medical park right. uh, on Harper Avenue. And am I correct that they merged with CCB when CCB came to town, or do I have it that confused with someone else? Now, that I'm, uh, they did merge with somebody, and but I'm not sure of well, who Well, I'm was. sure there's someone who will correct us on that. And yeah. Now, also, I, I left this key chain, this coin purse out right here. I found this thing and it's it's real stiff but it's it's made totally out of leather now it does open but it is very hard to read what's on there but it does say Torrance filling station dial 4-9118 Lenore North Carolina okay back before the days when we had to dial the PL Absolutely. Prefix. Now, where was Torrance Filling Station located? I believe it was out on West Harper Avenue, wasn't it? At the corner of Harper Avenue and Virginia Street right. at the stoplight, where Yoke Fella is down in the bottom down there. The, but okay. that filling station closed, oh, maybe three years ago or something. The okay. two sons, you know, decided to close it down. So, All right. Uh, All right. Now, some other things that was handed out was a uh, little straight screwdrivers that a lot of people, they would carry them in their pockets. Right. And you see, it's an advertisement <clears throat> of different businesses. Uh, yours is on? Uh, Ray's Radio and TV Service. Uh, 
Lenore, and the telephone number is 754-9547. says, if your TV, TV doesn't play, call Ray. And that was located uh, down on 18 Bypass, next, right behind the, the Derrick Frosty Freeze. Okay. Kind of between there and Western Carolina Electric Supply, a little right. building back right. in there. All right, yes. Now, kind of now all, you help me, yes. Almost looked like an A-frame type building. Yes, uh -huh. I remember that was now. that Ray's Music, okay. Then right beside of him was the Western Carolina Electric Supply, Lenore, North Carolina, phone number 754-5311. And these things also came with a magnet. Mm -hmm. The ends of these things, a lot of them, and they could pick up a screw if they needed right. to, to where it fell down into something. Very handy little implements to have, as well as nice advertising for the company. Absolutely, and this is one that just says Blue Ridge Electric Membership Corporation. Fix it electrically. Right. Blue Ridge Electric, of course, supplies electricity to a great part of the county now. Right. Now, a lot of times people would hand out these little, uh, oh, they'd have a bottle opener, a nail file, and what they called a knife, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, it was never very sharp, but I've got several of these from several different companies. You could put it on your keychain right. and carry it with you. Who's that one from? This one is the Bank of Lenore, the Time Loan Department. Okay. So that's a pretty good find from the Bank of Lenore. And also, we, we had this in an earlier program, but it, I think uh, Mr. Kincaid cut us out on this, so that's okay. one reason I brought this. <laughs> this is uh, compliments of the Bank of Grant, I mean Bank of Lenore, and it says Lenore, North Carolina, established in 1894, the old reliable. reliable right. And it was known as a bullet pencil. See, it looks like a bullet, but you could pull it apart and turn it like this, and then it became a right. writing tool. So. Uh, I've got several of these of businesses that are in Lenore. Now, another, I've never seen a bottle opener like this. It's kind of a weird bottle opener, but it does say Smith Crossroads Incorporated, Lenore, North Carolina. It actually has a piece of wood or something in the back of it. So that was a, a good little find right there. So, Well, Bruce, I must predate you a little bit. I have seen bottle openers like that. Okay. But they were, I always thought they were a little awkward to use, but uh, I never had to use one, so maybe that. Well, you know, it's kind of handy for the hand. It would be hard to, to put a lever action on it, but still it's small enough that you can right. carry it in your pocket. Uh -huh. So, and, and you do have a couple of years on me. <laughs> you <laughs> we, just had a birthday. <laughs> we won't get into that. We won't get into that. Okay. Now, this was a neat little find. Union Bus Terminal, Lenore, yes, remember it very well. This was beside of uh, City Service Cleaners. Uh, right. And the bus used to come through there and come around. It would come in one driveway and come around and park, and you could get, you'd have your luggage in there. They had, see, it was just like a, a train station or something, right. you know, even though it was a bus station. But uh, I found, I, I actually don't even know where I came across this at. But uh, the Union Bus, and I didn't realize it was called the Union at the time. I just knew it as right. the Bus Depot. Right, Bus know. Depot. And so it got moved a couple of times, once across town, then mm. back over. And, and now and I remember riding the bus a few times, uh, Bruce, and the time I guess it was the most memorable was when I left Lenore to go into the Air Force. And I left from Union Bus Terminal. And, of course, it wasn't the bus terminal's fault, but I regretted that trip a few times. <laughs> well, like we say, a lot of these places put out a lot of different things. So we had a, uh, a bottle opener from Smith Crossroads, and here we have two different yardsticks, and we notice it's in the same place, but it has a different address. They changed the numbers. Uh, the one, the lower one is 102 North uh, Boulevard, Lenore, North Carolina. But the top one is 100 North Boulevard. So where did they come up with that extra two at, do you think? Did they build a building in between somewhere and make I it there? Don't you suspect maybe that they just renumbered the 
residents. You know, they do that periodically. For, uh, and John, I have to, uh, the, especially the wide one right there, I went and had a, a sit-down talk with uh, Francis Smith, who married Frederick Shaw, uh, who passed away here several weeks ago. But uh, we sit and talked for probably an hour about Smith Crossroads, and she gave me some matchbook covers and uh, some key rings and the yardstick, and, you know, and she does have some few other things, so I've got to go back and see her. But she was real informative, and, and I really enjoyed the talk. And that's what's so good about some of this is the actual families that I can go sit and right. talk. I've got three or four that I've got to go see, but I keep running into things, you know, other things that I'm doing, so it, yes, it's Francis hard. Is, Francis is always a delight when you talk with her. Oh, so. yeah, and she is real informative, too. All right. I don't remember this. Uh, I have heard of it, but I just don't remember it. Here is a light switch cover that says, Switch to Lenore Electric Repair Company, phone Plaza 4. 4556 Lenore, North Carolina. And it has a thermometer on it. Now, uh, and also, which is a, a little bit on the risque side, I guess you would call it, wouldn't you? Not by today's standards. Not by today's <laughs> standard, no. It's probably missing a few things. But what these are, are these are ink blotters that when you would write, you would take these things and use them to blot your ink. Right. And uh, they did have a place in Lenore, but they also had one in Hickory. And this one is advertising two businesses. Lenore, Lenore Electric Repair Company and Lenore Machine Shop. And then we also have another place that put out a lot of these things. Uh, I have seen other ones on these things right here. And a lot of them have calendars on them that are dated. And John, what's this one on? This one is Irving's Men's Shop, and I just see something here that I had forgotten, that they had a store in Statesville as well as Lenore. Absolutely, they had two stores. Uh, you know, there used to be a, a Harville's clothing store here in Lenore. Right. But they also had one in Hickory. Right. Uh, now this one here is January of 54. What is yours? Mine is November of 53. So. so you know, I've got some 53s and 54s. So I but, guess the uh, idea was to get you to come back in every month and get an ink blotter. Was that it? I guess, and buy another shirt or a sport coat or right. whatever. But, but these things are still around because people didn't use them all and throw them away. And that's what happens is uh -huh. a lot of these things were used and then they were thrown away. And I believe uh, Irvin's was located on the corner of uh, West Avenue and Church Street. Is that right? Mm-hmm. And I remember in the basement of it was Raymond Triplett's uh, West Avenue Furniture and Music Company. Absolutely. So they used to buy records in there, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's, by the way, that's the old Y.D. Moore building that Irving's Men's Shop was in, too. Yeah, it has the date on top of right. 1913. Uh, I can't recall the man's name. He lives up in Mulberry. But he called me one night and asked me if I would like to have these things. Now, what this is is a salt and pepper shaker. And uh, this one says Fire Chief, and yours says Sky Chief. And it, yours has the company on it on the back that it came from. Okay, from the Norwood Service Station on North Main Street. And again, a telephone number 49412, no plaza, no 75. So these are real early. I think his mother saved salt and pepper shakers. Oh, okay. And so uh, I, I really appreciate that. That was a neat find. And some more. And, but this is on the SO. Right. Uh, mine says SO Extra. And this just says SO. Okay, so this is the premium and yours is the regular. But this is B.A. Bolick, distributors of SO Products, Lenore, North Carolina. Okay. And if I, my memory serves me correctly, it was somewhere in Valmead. All right. Uh, East Step Oil was the same place, and I don't know whether this owned it first or East Step owned it, but I do have a salt and pepper shaker on East Step Oil, but it's somewhere in my house that I put that only I would know where it's at, and I, I keep remembering that I forget those things, you know. I see. Uh -huh. 
Now, who's the older of the two? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are. <laughs> but you see, I'm catching you fast. Uh, these things right here were put out by Brawl Hill several years ago. And what it was was when you would open a drink bottle, instead, you couldn't reseal them. Right. So they gave you, and there's a lot of colors in this. There's the blue and the red and the green and the yellow and the white. And so this is Brawl Hill Furniture Factory, factories uh, in Lenore, North Carolina. So I've got a bunch of these things right here that people have uh, given me over the years. And then some people would actually put out little, they, they, in change or whatever, or they would want you to come back so they would hand you a little token. Right, okay. Uh, now this is on the smokehouse. Right. Now is this the one that was out in Gamble on the old road out there? That was what I was going to ask you. Is it the one out there? <laughs> That's the only smokehouse that I know only of. Only one I know of also. And you see, they came in different denominations and different colors. This one is 25 cent and uh, John, yours is five, five cents. cents. right. And we actually have them in 50 cents and 10 cent and even a one cent. So there's tokens from different businesses. Now, this one, we're going to ask the question of, where was it? We, we think we know, but we're not sure. Uh, we do know that it was on Creekway Drive. Right. And we do know that it was called Safeway Food. And it was 811 Creekway Drive, Lenore, North Carolina. And they came in different denominations. They had 50 cent. Yours is a 25, right? And here's a, a five cent one, and then a, a 10 cent one, and they also had a one cent one. And these were sales incentives to get people into their store, I'm sure. I think they just handed them out to you so that you could come back, and that way when you bought something, you would get 25 cent off. It was right. kind of like a coupon, right? You know, and actually, these, those from that store came off of eBay and came from somewhere, if my memory serves me correctly, was out of Michigan. Okay. Now, these things wind up in Michigan, right. you know, is, is just a, you know, it's phenomenal about these things. Uh, now, one of the better stores or oldest, the oldest store. The oldest store, the oldest business. Oldest business that's in Lenore uh, is Bernhardt Siegel. Right. Okay. Uh, I think I, I can't remember if I showed this one time, but uh, who's the lady that wrote the book on the church up there? Lucy McCarl. Lucy McCarl. Uh, but she called me one day, and uh, I went up there and picked this up. And so, but this is a real early piece for the simple reason that it gives all three of their businesses. Uh -huh. See, they they had Bernhardt Siegel and Company since 1829. But they had a furniture store, a hardware store, and a building supply. Right. Now we know where the hardware store was, it's still there. They also in the back, they had an industrial hardware part back there at right. one time. Okay, their building supply was down across from Lenore High School Band Building okay. on Harper Avenue. And uh, actually we have a, uh, this is a nail apron. I've got it all folded up right now, but it's, it's Bernhardt Siegel, and it does say that it's 314 West Harper Avenue, and this has a plaza number. Right. And it was in Lenore, North Carolina. Now, one bit of information I would like to find out is the furniture store was located in a different place than the hardware store. Now, this is my understanding but I don't know where it was. And one other thing, if somebody can help me out, this is one thing that has eluded me, is a early, or a yardstick from Bernhardt Siegel in Lenore. Okay. I'm missing two yardsticks. One is Globe Hardware and the other one is Bernhardt and Siegel. And I know Bernhardt and Siegel put out three different yardsticks. Uh, Lucy thought she was gonna help me out, but she couldn't find one. All right. Bruce, it looks like you have a couple of bottles here that might be interesting. 
Well, I've come up with these in just the last little bit. Uh, the one that you're holding there is a, uh, that is a real early uh, Lenore drugstore. And uh, Tom Bailey and his wife, uh, I was in there one day and they gave me that to go in my collection. Uh, so I appreciate that. And I had a gentleman, uh, I seen him in the Winn-Dixie one day and he really liked what we were doing. He said, I think I got something for you, so come by the house. And he lived right over on uh, Miller Hill. So uh, I went, and matter of fact, he's a Craig. And, uh, well, we won't hold that against him. No, uh -uh. no, uh -uh. but anyhow, I went to his house, and this is one of the, along with Lenore Drug, was one of the earlier stores, uh, drug stores, when Earl Tate came into town, he opened two drug stores. And this one is actually called Tate's Drug Store, and it says that it has prescription first, and it is opposite of the courthouse. So it was across the street from the Caldwell County Courthouse. Now it just says Lenore, oh it does have a phone number of 355. And this is oil of wintergreen. I do know this bottle does smell, you know. Right, wintergreen has a nice smell to I it. I carried that in the car and my wife kept saying, what is that smell? I said, oh it's oil of wintergreen. <laughs> Okay, are uh, you getting ready to go into the uh, sewing business here, Bruce? Well, Courtney's put out a lot of different things, and uh, this is on uh, Courtney's clothing store. And uh, if you will hold that right there, this is a little sewing kit that they would hand out uh, for you to put in your purse. For you know, most time it was women that carried those things. You didn't find many men that carried them in those days. But this is a sewing kit. It's got a couple of needles in it and some thread and some uh, other things in there that uh, Courtney's handed out. There's, uh, there's about four or five different colors of thread in there also. Right. And this must be about 1941, Bruce, because it says Caldwell County's 100th anniversary. Okay, so then we know when that was handed out then, don't right. we? Right. Mm -hmm. And along with that, they also handed out this. Now, it's hard to see this little thing that's sticking out oh, to I one see. side, but this is known as a needle threader. Needle threader. This is for you can't see very well. You could put this through the eye, put the thread through this, and pull it back through, and it would thread that thing just like that. You know, Bruce, if I have to thread a needle now, I have to have one of those things to do it. So. I have to have somebody hold my hand still. <laughs> <laughs> this needle threader came from uh, Miss Pearson up on North Main Street. That was the antique lady for years and years. Okay. Nell Pearson. Nell Pearson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this came from out of her house. By the way, Bruce, have you noticed that they're redoing her house now? They're going to restore that house, I understand. Yeah, I understand. There was a lady bought that, and she was hunting pictures, and they called me, and they called you. And, and right. Uh, so far, we haven't come up with a picture. Uh, Courtney's also put out a fan. Uh, this is a little folding fan. It says, since 1872, ladies and men's wear. Uh, 112 and 114 West Avenue, phone 4, 5211. So this was before they put the plaza to it. And also this was when they had two locations. And a lot of people, and, and I never realized it, but if you look, both of those buildings where Lenore Drugstore was and the Courtney building, those, both of those were the Courtney's. Okay. They, they had businesses in both of those. Hmm. And a very pretty picture on the fan, too. Yeah, I thought Rural maybe scene. it might have been a, uh, the, the church up in, uh, oh, out in Gamel that's back up in there that's so old. Little you know? John's. Yeah, but it's, it's not. I don't believe it's Little John's, no. and I'm not, I doubt that it's a local church. It'd be nice if it were, wouldn't uh, it? Actually, that church is in Massachusetts. Oh, okay. It looks like a New England <laughs> setting. Now, uh, I have to really thank Jan Pennell. I was in her house one day and she showed me these things. And it took me a while to get them, but uh, <laughs> you know, I, I guess she got tired of me begging and she 
went ahead and let me have them. You know, they had a remnant shop in there that they would sell fabric. Right. And so this is a pair of scissors that actually has, uh, what is written on there, John? This says, Courtney's Department Store, a good place to shop. But you could buy fabric, and they would cut that fabric with these scissors mm -hmm. and uh, roll it up and give it to you. Right. So uh, it's hard to find something like that with the name of the business on there. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was a... Bruce, that, I'd be willing to bet they cut only maybe about an inch and then ripped it. <laughs> now that's, I, I have think, heard of that. I think I remember my mother buying yeah. fabric, and they did that. That was the only way they could be sure they were getting a straight... Yeah. Dead on it. Now this also came out of Courtney's clothing store. Uh, now it does not have a name on it, but there was a man working there the day that they shut this store down, and his name is Bob King. And most people knew him from working in department stores. His wife Jean worked at Belks for years and years and years, okay. and uh, he confiscated this out of a closet when they were closing the doors. Okay. So we do know that it did come out of Courtney's. This is called a string holder. You'd have a ball of string inside and you'd wrap it off so much and wrap a package. Okay. And this is a cast iron and it's called the beehive. It looks like a beehive. So uh, that was a real good one. And I actually have another one of those that looks exactly like it that came out of McGowan Hardware, which maybe could have come from Lenore Hardware because those guys worked at Lenore right. Hardware. I remember, Bruce, when they used to wrap packages and put string around them. Now they put things in paper bags and you carry it out of the store. Uh, J.C. Penney's, they used, in a lot of those places, they had a, a paper roller. Right. And they'd roll off so much paper, wrap it up, and put string, string around it. I remember that. And I have the paper roller from uh, uh, Collins Department Store, and I have the paper roller from J.C. Penney's. Right. What do you, what's that? That's a nice little piece. Well, I have no idea. Some guy brought me this one day. It's a jewelry box, and it does say Lenore, North Carolina in real fine letters down there, and all it is is a little cedar box that you could put a small amount. You might could put some necklaces here and rings over on that side. But now, you know, a lot of these businesses, especially to put out the little, what they called a miniature cedar box uh, mm -hmm. for clothes if they had the big one. But they'd hand them to all of the girls that were graduating, graduating right. from Lenore mm -hmm. High School and maybe from other schools. I think the county schools as well. Uh, but I have two, and one of them is from W. Shaw Furniture, and the other one is from, uh, what's the hardware store down uh, across from Lenore News Topic that used to be up there in town? I'm having a senior moment. Oh, I've, I got a big one right now. I don't know why I can't remember that hardware store. Uh, but anyhow, I've got one of those. All right. <laughs> I'll sit at the house and watch this on TV and say, you dummy, it was that, you was, know. Are you thinking about shields? That's it. Hey. Okay. Now who's the oldest? I don't know. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> yeah. But uh, even businesses put out coffee cups. Right. And this was a uh, Huff Hines Insurance Company that was uh, up on the corner of Mulberry, Mulberry Street, right, and East Avenue. Just says Mulberry Street. I'm not sure exactly where well, the building was. It was on that was. corner there. Right. It was the one that burnt down. There's a parking lot in there now. Okay. You know, and then I forgot when we were showing the Earps Radio and TV service, but he handed out this little Zeppo lighter, mm -hmm. and. Uh, so I remember a lot of businesses used to hand out lighters, so there probably yeah. are more around that you just yeah. haven't got your hands on yet. Well, it, it really amazes me that the more I find, the more I realize that the more there are out there. Right. And so uh, then we've had several things. We had a paperweight and a couple other things on this same business. This is Lenore Funeral Home, and uh, they had a number of Plaza 43441. And this was when they were out on West Harper Avenue in the right. old house out there. So uh, a lot of people handed out ashtrays. Right, and I don't think any of us are a bit anxious to use this business, do you? 
No, sir. No, sir. But other businesses did put out some of these uh, ashtrays, and I don't know why, but I forgot the one on uh, Lenore Auto Parts. I got one from... Uh, okay. But you do have another one there, don't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this is W. Shaw Furniture Company. Okay. Now that's where it's on the corner the, right there. If you think of Huffines Insurance Company, this is right across the street, still on okay. Mulberry Street. But it's where Caldwell Motors was for years. And uh, Yes, I believe we mentioned um, W. Shaw Furniture a little bit earlier. Yeah. And, and I think you have something else there from Shaw? Yeah. Uh, I've got a yardstick. Okay. And uh, all of these places would make these yardsticks for you to hand, you know, to hand out to people to take home. And... Uh, I go into houses and first thing I do is look in a closet because it's usually in the corner of a closet is where <laughs> these things are standing, you know. And people actually forget they have them. And so if they can help us out with some of these, there's hundreds of them that people put out in this county, you know. Okay, so look in those corners of the closets, folks, and keep Bruce in mind. In fact, this might be a good time for you to tell them your phone number in case they do find one in the corner of the closet. Okay. The number is 754-7330. Now, if you forget the number and you want to look it in the phone book, just be sure and look under T, Bruce Craig, and that way you'll get me instead of the one in Green Acres. Okay, the one in Green Acres probably doesn't collect things like this, does he? Uh, this man helps me, believe it or not. And his <laughs> name is Bruce Craig, and he has helped me a bunch. He's given me some real nice stuff. Well, good. So he's, he's been a friend as well as taking some of my phone calls. All right. So now we have, we had three hotels in Lenore. Uh, the early one was the Carlisle Hotel. And actually, I don't know when Smith Crossroads Motel was built. Probably the early 50s, 55. I would say somewhere along there. Uh, but this is another treasure from Francis, and she let me have this. And uh, then everybody knows of the Holiday Inn, which was across the street and was actually built on probably part of the Smith uh, property. property there. And it was called the Holiday Inn, which these are no more, you know. Right. And uh, Well, the building of the Holiday Inn is still there, but it's Ramada now, I believe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. Shakespeare, you know, once wrote a play called Measure for Measure. I believe he must have been around you, Bruce, when he uh, did this. So why don't you tell us about uh, some of these yardsticks that you've got? Well, it's like I say, all of these places and businesses put these things out for kind of like advertisement. Uh, now, this right here is on uh, the Lenore Auto Parts. And uh, they were on East Harper Avenue in Lenore. And... Uh, they had two phone numbers, and actually this was one of the earlier uh, auto parts that was in this town. They've been around a long time, and I wondered for a long time of why these little holes in this thing. Why are they? Uh, I don't know that I'm going to get the name of, it, it's like a, a, a little part that goes in the motor when they're rebuilding the motors, and they would have these things sitting oh, okay. in this thing. And it's, it's not a cylinder because it's too big. Their cylinders are too big. So I've, I've forgotten what that word is. But it's a thing when you're rebuilding and you can set those things in this right here. Okay, I see. Okay, I believe Lenore Auto Parts was located down the corner of East Harper and Penton Avenue. And right. I believe the uh, news topic advertising department is in the building that they once were in. Well, they were in the building where the Domino's Pizza moved out of first. I believe you're right. The, yeah, and then I they moved right. over there. And actually, if you think about it, there's 16 of these things, okay. holes. So there were two per cylinder if it was an eight cylinder. Right. So, you know, that might help it a little bit. Okay. Then we have the Tom Brooks Chevrolet, and this is their parts department. So they done the same thing. They put the holes in this thing to put those little old parts in so right. you could stand them up. And uh, this is when they are, I think, first moved out on the Wilkesboro Boulevard. I don't believe it has a, uh, no, it an address. It doesn't have an address, no. But uh, I'm pretty sure this is when they were moved out on the 
Wilkesboro Road that they handed this and out. And of course, they're still out there and still in business. Right. Uh, they first bought out Fred Gaddy Chevrolet, moved it to Whitnell, got burnt out a couple of times, parts department one time, showroom another time, and that's when they built on the Wilkesboro okay. Road out there. Uh, now, we had a lot of building supplies and paint stores and, you know, uh, things in Lenore. And one of the more well-known paint stores, other than Sherwin-Williams, but uh, locally, was the W.G. Cannon Paint Company. Right. And uh, I believe this has a plaza number. It doesn't give the address, but, uh, and I'm not sure... Now this one, we'll go ahead and show this. This is a yardstick on the WG Cannon, and it does give the address. Uh, South Mulberry. 112 South Mulberry Street, Lenore, North Carolina. So it would have been, that building is still there. Uh, it's across the street from H&R Block. Okay. It's the... On that side of the street right there, there's only three businesses that you could go to. One's a beauty shop, one is the Western Auto, and then this little building, which there's not been anything in that building in probably, I don't know, 12, 14, 15 years or maybe more. And then here's another one. This is just a different colored one. They, they advertise different kind of paints. And uh, this one is a plaza number, but it doesn't give uh, the address. so. You know, but they moved from there down on West Harper Avenue where the pawn shop is in another building that caught on fire one night and exploded and they built the new building mm -hmm. and now they're out on the Zacks Fork Road. Yeah, right. Wouldn't that be East Harper where the pawn shop is? Yeah. Did I say West? You said West, right. Okay. I'm, I'm going from one to the other, so, uh, but anyhow, uh, let's see. Here's a paint and varnish. So this is the Ron McGowan, right? Yeah, uh, the McGowan Hardware Store, it's and it was Main. on 300 North Main Street. Right. This I remember that very well. My dad used to go in there, and I remember the Mr. McGowans. I was just a little boy, but I do remember Dad going in because he knew them and go in a few minutes when he came to town. And you know, those McGowan brothers came out for hardware. Right. And then they were on North Main Street there, close to where Crowell's was. And then eventually they moved up on way up on North Main Street across from the Monument Place on that corner right there. Okay. I think it's called the Rex House now. Right. Now, I don't guess we can do anything without saying something about Hudson. No, and certainly we want to include Hudson. Absolutely. Uh, and this is the Hudson Hardware Company. And that's been in Hudson down there for many, many years. It's, it's still there. Uh, it's on okay. the right-hand side of the railroad tracks across the street from Thornburg uh, okay. Department Store. Then this is the only one that I have on Bernhardt and Seagulls. But this was when they opened a, in the Fairway Shopping Center, they opened another store, a second store. Right. And it was called Bernhardt and Seagulls of Hudson. And uh, so this was a good find. I don't remember, if some, I, somebody in Hudson gave me this at one time. So, uh, mm -hmm. but it's the only one I have on them. Uh, all right, now this place was in business for a lot of many, many years. Many, many years, right. And matter of fact, they're still in business, but they're in a different location. They started out on Willow Street there. Right. And. Uh, or I think that's where they started. That's where I always remember them being. And uh, so this is Boss Lumber Company. And this is 101 Willow Street. And they have no phone number. So uh, they, but they sold a lot of different things in there along with building supplies. Now, this one is no longer in business. Uh, been around for a long time. It was the Caldwell Builders and uh, Builder Supply. Uh, Way out north of town. Yeah. Uh, matter of fact, on the old 321 going to Blowing right. Rock up there on the left after you cross the railroad track. And uh, this was owned by the Keys family. Right. And so this is no longer in existence. Now, I uh, stopped one day and uh, Mr. George Krull gave me this. I was wanting something. 
And he said, well, I think I have a yardstick. So I stopped at his house out there next to Cedar Rock, and he gave me this. Uh, they sold major appliances, but, you know, they sold some auto parts and tires. And, tires, yeah. And, you know, there where it was at on 309 uh, Main Street, you know, that was the most cluttered store that there was in this town. <laughs> But he and his dad knew where everything was. Right. They knew everybody that came in that store. And I think that was a plus for them. Absolutely. That a lot of people like that intimacy with the people that owned the store. And they come in and say, hey, how are you? And hadn't seen them in a year or so. Uh -huh. So I bought several tires and several things. from. bought my first bicycle from George Curl. Both of the Mr. Curls were friends of my dad's. And again, I used to be taken in there when I was a little boy. I bought my first record player there and bought tires from there several times. And it's still always a pleasure to see Mr. George Jr. I run into him once in a while and yeah. we always talk about the old times. Yeah, yeah, that's the way I am. I seen him at Ed Tudor's birthday party here last Sunday. He turned 90 years old, a baseball scout right. that done the Avon Theater for several years. This is the Caldwell. FCX service over at Whitnall. Uh, in Whitnall. Uh, they still say Lenore, but it's in Whitnall. Right. They had farm and garden and loan supplies. They had fertilizer, and uh, but I think they also sell cattle food and dog food, and you know, but it's no more. This right here is on the Woodbury Lumber Company. See, a lot of these building supplies put these things out. Uh, now here's another one on Caldwell oh, well. County, uh, Caldwell Paint and, and Glass. Now this was the Jonas's that had part of this because you know they had the right. glass company and they were at 112 Mulberry Street and then it became the paint store altogether. That's a bright one. That's a bright one. I don't know why they done that but that's Kent Coffee Manufacturing Company in Lenore, North Carolina. Then you had Behringer Oil Company which was in Whitnell. Whitnell also, right. And it says, make it a rule to buy the big gallon. Now, tell me where the Crest Family Center was, John. Uh, it was at the Crossroads Shopping Center uh, next to where Foothills Pharmacy is. Right. Uh, in that area now. That, that was a big department store yes, at one time. Yes, I remember time. it. It sure was. Okay, tell me where J.C. Penney's was in Lenore. Okay, J.C. Penney's was located on West Avenue. Uh, across from the county office building now. Just above Fidelity Insurance Company. Right. Uh, a good department store. And uh, so, okay, Bruce, uh, again, you might want to tell the people uh, your phone number in case somebody may find a yardstick in the closet or some other treasure you'd like to have. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, you know, one thing I would like to say is that I was in Charlotte at a big... Uh, antique show down there. They call it extravaganza. There's over 10,000 dealers there and there's 75,000 people there. And I was way in a back corner, back in the back lot, and there was a man came up to me from Hudson that said he liked what we done. Well, we're glad to hear that, aren't we? Now, it, it's amazing that that far off that people recognize. Yeah, right. And I get so many phone calls of people that like what we're doing. They're interested, and it just it tickles them to see some of this old stuff, you know. Right. So, you know, keep the phone calls coming. Uh, and if, you know, sometimes somebody wants to see some of this stuff, then give me a call and come by the house. You know, I, it doesn't bother me. So, uh but my number is 754-7330. I'm listed in the phone book as T. Bruce Craig. Okay, we also have similar items to this at the Caldwell Heritage Museum. Uh, and we're open on Tuesday through Friday from 10 o'clock a.m. until 4.30 p.m. and 10 till 3 on Saturday. We'd be glad for you to come by and see what we have here at the museum uh, as well. There is no admission charge uh, when you come here too. Uh, Bruce, this has been a good visit, and I hope we can get back together again soon. Um, perhaps you'll bring some more things uh, to show us again. Well, I look forward to it, and I hope someday to do one on baseball in Lenore and also on the Lenore High School and the band, you know, might be our next show. All right. We hope uh, we'll look forward to that. Uh, again, if you uh, have items that you want to uh, call Bruce, or if you want to call us here at the museum, 758-4004. We'll be glad to pass the message on to Bruce. Uh, thank you again for watching uh, Caldwell today.